Well, good morning. It is good to be together. There's nothing quite so special as being together as families around Christmas time. It's just awesome. I know that I mean, we have um, grandkids in, well, at least they're all on this continent this year. But anyways, we have grandkids in various places that aren't here. And so it's always good to get together. Facebook's good. Phone calls are good. We're thankful for those options. There's nothing quite so special as getting together at Christmas in person as a family. And so we're thankful for you making the time and effort to make, come here and join us this morning as family, as a Bethel family, and thanks for coming. There will come a day when social distancing will be reduced and then hopefully eliminated, and a day when we will be able to fellowship together without masks. What a day that will be. But that's not today. Sorry. So in order that we can uh, keep open and, and preach the Word of God, we need to ask you to um, wear a mask or a face shield uh, throughout the entire service and fully wear the mask that's over nose, over chin, um, and that's not necessary for each of us, it's for everybody else. So please do that um, for the sake of everybody else in the place, and we can keep everyone healthy. Um, appreciate your help in that regard. Another week that we're not doing communion. So normally, we, as you know, most of you know, we do communion every Monday, every Sunday. Last week we didn't, and this week we're not too, not going to do it at two. Again, <laughs> wrong teeth. Um, <clears throat> but the, um, it's only because the format of the services have, have, are relevant to that, so we decided not to do the communion. Nothing's changed drastically. Um, next week we'll be looking forward to having communion again. So next week when you come and join us, which we hope you will, um, come in as you come in, pick up the communion kits on the way in, and we'll enjoy doing communion together next week. You've got a bulletin on the way in, pay attention to that. There's some information in there with regards to upcoming meetings, and um, they're all uh, looking forward to those. Also in the middle of this um, um, bulletin is a prayer list. I'd ask you to take time and look at the prayer list. Um, and, and be prepared and, and pray for those people that are on the list. There's two lists, actually. There's a prayer list, and just below that, the submitted requests, all of which have people that need to be prayed for. There may be others that the Lord brings to your mind that you, should, you could pray for, too. We'd ask you to do that. Be, be found f diligent in praying for one another. It's pretty special for us to pray for one another. On the right-hand side of the page is um, a Connect card. This tears off. And if you need to be prayed for, if you'd like something to be prayed for, then please put it on there and we'll make sure that happens. One thing we can pray for is Holly Spin's mom. She has some um, major surgery coming up in Toronto in about 10 days. So just pray for the weather and all, the, all that that's going to happen and that the surgery will go according to plan and all will be good. Um, we're looking forward to something this morning. I've, I've had the privilege of seeing it already. So um, you're in for a treat this morning, and I'm going to pray, and so join with me in that regard, that you can fully embrace how special it is by shutting out some of the challenges of the present tense, the presents you haven't got yet, who are you going to buy for this, just the social media challenges, the COVID challenges, all that stuff. We're going to pray, and pray with me that if we can sort of put those aside, lay them at the feet of Jesus, put those aside, so we can focus on the message that God's got for us this morning. Um, Let's do that, and I'll tell you more about what's going to happen. Father, we thank you for the genuine privilege it is that we can get together. Lord, in this environment, getting together is something we don't take for granted, and we thank you and praise you for the opportunity to do so. We thank you for this time of year, Father, where we can have Christmas um, um, Sunday school programs and Christmas other things, that just as we center on that gift of gifts, the, gifts, the gift that um, changed eternity. Father, we just thank you for that gift of Jesus this morning. Help us to just worship and the majesty of that gift, the magnificence of that gift. But Father, again, as we do that, let's not forget that the, 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 the gift of hope was given at Christmas, but the purpose for that gift wasn't realized until the cross. And we're thankful for that, um, that gift that, that was enough to take your son to the cross for us, because that indeed changed eternity for all of us. Be with all those involved in the... Um, in this presentation this morning. Bless them richly, Father, for their time and energy and uh, skills that they put into it to make this all happen, to bless us. Father, we'd ask for ourselves that as we just sit here now 
in a quiet time, just thinking about, um, hopefully thinking about you, hopefully thinking about God and nothing else, hoping to be thinking about not all the world's stuff that tends to filter out the magnificence of God sometimes, the fullness of God, the, the thoroughness of God's blessing. Help us to just park that for at least for an hour, hopefully for more than that, but at least for the next hour. Give us the commitment, the, the, um, whatever it is we need to be able to park that. We ask this in the awesome name of Jesus. Amen. Well, again, you're in for a treat. And before we get to the treat, I want to thank everyone. Um, although you know, we can't get too much thanks. I'm impressed with what God's given us at Bethel. The gift that he's given us here is just mind-blowing. And the, the, we see expressions of that this morning. No, there's more gift than this, but, but the fact that these people have been able to put this together, Marion in, in particular, let me point at Marion. Um, in particular, Marion and Phil, for putting this together in the midst of all these shutdowns and all these lockdowns and all the other things, trying to get a, a rehearsals together, trying to get things put together with all that's going on. To be able to do that is just mind-blowing, um, mind-blowing. <laughs> the creativity and investment of time and energy to honor the Lord and bless us is amazing and so very much appreciated. So thanks from all of us. This morning's program will include some music from some of our Sunday school students, a drama from our senior students, a special video presentation from Bethel's Children's Choir, which is directed by Christine Horst, a short message, and then a chance to sing carols together. So you're in for a treat. Enjoy. Oh. See, I don't have that creativity part of me. I even forget stuff. Um, to start things off, Please welcome Noah, Victoria, and Hannah Palinuk as they play What Child Is This? Thanks to the Palinuk family.
What a great day for a story. And what better story to tell than that of the birth of Jesus Christ. Would you like to hear about the day our Lord and Savior was born? Then let's get started. Twas the night before... Now I know what you're thinking. That's not the right story, but I assure you it is. Just listen. Twas the night before Sabbath, and in old Nazareth, a girl named Mary had a visitor she didn't expect. His name was Gabriel. He was an angel sent from God. And when Mary saw him, she thought it was quite odd. What did God want with her? Only a young girl. Let's hear Gabriel's message and watch God's plan unfurl. I hope Joseph likes this lamb stew I made for him. He's coming to dine with my family tonight, and I want him to know what a good wife I will make for him. And as my mother always says, the quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Who are you? Where did you come from? Mary of Nazareth, it is I, the angel Gabriel, come to deliver God's message to you. What could God possibly want with me? Oh, you have found favor with the Lord. The Lord is with you. But I am only a young girl. Oh, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will soon become pregnant and give birth to a son and name him Jesus. He will be a great man and will be called the Son of the Most High. Uh, the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will be the king of Jacob's people forever, and his kingdom will never end. How can this be? Well, the Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and so the Holy Child developing within you will be the Son of God. This doesn't seem possible. Well, your relative Elizabeth is six months pregnant with a child in her old age. People said she wouldn't be able to give birth, but... Nothing is impossible with God. Very well. I am the Lord's servant. Let everything you said happen to me. Now Mary was ready to do the Lord's will, but there was one little problem that bothered her still. What of her husband, Joseph the carpenter? 
When she told him of the baby, would he even want her? Well, Joseph was angry. How could this be? This was so unexpected from his sweet bride, Mary. He would end their marriage. That's just what he'd do. But then Gabriel came and told Joseph God's plan, too. I can't believe what Mary told me. How can she be pregnant? And she wants me to trust that the baby is the son of God? Why, that's preposterous. She must think I'm a fool. And to think we were just betrothed. I cannot worry about this anymore tonight. I'll go to sleep, and in the morning, I will go to the high priest and tell them that I would like to quietly end my marriage to Mary. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, for what develops in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save all of his people from their sins. What Mary said was true. An angel did visit her to tell her of God's plan, and now the same angel has visited me. I will do as God wishes and take Mary as my wife tomorrow. And when the time comes and she gives birth to a son, I will raise him and help him to become the man God wants him to be. So the two were married and as happy as can be. They planned a home, a, a home with room for a baby. Spring changed to summer and then became autumn. Mary and Joseph were anxious for the baby they'd been given. Mary's tummy was growing. It was as big as could be. And then Caesar Augustus issued a decree. There was to be a census taken all over the land. Now Mary and Joseph must go to Bethlehem. I'm not going to lie. I was not very happy about having to travel all the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem with Mary so close to giving birth. But what else could we do? Bethlehem is the town of David. And because I belong to the house and lineage of David, we had better go there and register. It was not a pleasant journey, let me tell you. It took us five days to travel 90 miles across treacherous terrain on the back of a donkey. Speak for yourself, I had to walk the entire way. That may be true, but which of us is pregnant with the Son of God? You've got me there. Exactly. <laughs> Mary and Joseph arrived after many days, and they looked and looked for somewhere to stay. There were so many people from near and from far. They came to be counted by the registrar. So Mary and Joseph knocked on each and every door, the answer always the same as the one before. There's no room in the inn, the innkeepers cried. Mary said, I just want to birth my baby inside. One innkeeper took pity on our travelers too. She said, I have an idea. I know what you can do. All right, so here's the thing. I'm having an absolutely record-breaking weekend here in Bethlehem. All my rooms are sold. Can you believe it? I know a lot of people were upset when Caesar Augustus decreed that a census must be taken, but I, for one, was excited. I mean, Bethlehem is a pretty bustling place. In our marketplace, we have not one, but two fig merchants. Can you believe it? Even Samaria doesn't have two fig merchants. But even though it's a best bustling place, Bethlehem isn't known for its tourist destination, if you know what I mean. It's pretty warm here most of the time. Winter is pretty warm, spring is well hot, fall, hot, summer, let's just put it this way. It's so hot and dry that our camels start to look like plain old horses. <laughs> For you non-animal lovers, that was a joke. I was trying to say that it's so hot that our camels don't have enough water to store in their humps, so their backs are as flat as horses. Get it? <laughs> anyway, we don't get too many travelers through Bethlehem, so us innkeepers were very excited for the influx of travelers headed our way. Only, we had no idea how many there would be. You've got to remember, we don't have phones, we don't have internet. We had no idea how many people would be coming to be counted for the census. Come to think of it, that's probably why Caesar wanted a census in the first place. In any case, when Mary and Joseph showed up, my, up at my door, I was all booked up. But I'm a smart businesswoman, so I wasn't about to turn away a paying customer. No sorry, Bob. I may not have had, he, had any more room inside my inn, but I knew I had just the place for that pregnant gal to give birth to her little bundle of joy. Do you know the place I'm talking about? That's right, the stable at back. Now I know what some of you are thinking. How could you let the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ give birth to him in a smelly old stable? 
Well, I will have you know, I keep a very clean stable, and I'm known throughout Bethlehem for the nicest sheep, horses, and cows around. Of course, you have to remember, I didn't know Mary was going to give birth to Jesus Christ. To me, Mary and Joseph were just another pa couple of paying customers. So I took them up back, gave them some nice clean hay and some linen I had lying around, and wished them a good night. And the rest was, as I say, history. Can you believe it? So as night crept in on the stable so warm, Mary's firstborn child, a son, was born. In swaddling clothes she wrapped him tight to keep him warm in the cold, dark night. She laid him in a manger to use as his bed. Warm straw was a pillow that cradled his head. And what did she call him? A name we know so well. Why, of course, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. What a miracle to think that I am holding the Son of God in my arms. But when I look at him, I just see my son. My son who I will love, protect, and nurture so that he can become the man God needs him to be. What an awesome responsibility God has given me. I'm not going to lie. It's a little scary. Will I, make, will I be a good mom? Will I make the right decisions? Will he grow up to be everything he's supposed to be? But I know that God will be by my side every step of the way, and I thank him for this most special gift, the gift of my son, Jesus. Nearby in the fields, a shepherd tended to his sheep. It was getting pretty late, and he was falling asleep. Then, out of the darkness, a great noise was heard. A chorus of angels his sleep did disturb. They brought him a message from heaven above, the birth of a savior, joyous tidings, and love. And the next sheep ran over the garden gate, and up, 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 he jumped and landed on the other side. And that's 1,263 sheep. The next sheep ran over the garden gate, and up, 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 he jumped and landed on the other side. Good job, little sheepy. Your shepherd is very proud of you. And that's 1,264 sheep. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Hey, not nice. You've gone and messed up my sheep counting. Whoa, who are you? Where do, did you come from? Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. That's great, but you do realize it's not nice to just sneak up on people like that, don't you? Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Wow. Well, that's worth interrupting my sleep then. Go on. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. But, but how will I know where to find him? God will guide you. Yes, he will. Wait, what do you say your name was? People are coming and going so quickly these days, and she didn't even give me her name. Oh, well. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. So the shepherd set off to see the Messiah. He trusted in God, so he'd know where to find him. His journey was long. I'm sorry. I know you're trying to tell a story here, and you've got this really cool rhyming thing going on. Thank you. You're welcome. But I just have to say this. It's not nice to wake someone up when they're sleeping. Am I right? I mean, we've all been there, right? It's nice to wake up nice and slowly, stretch out a little, and see what the day has in store for you. But when you start out of your sleep, I mean, can you blame me for being a little bit confused? There I was, tending my flock in the middle of the field, and out of nowhere, an angel of the Lord just appears to speak with me. I think we can all understand my surprise. But if I had to do it all over again, I would have been much more impressive, I assure you. But what can you do? The Lord works in mysterious ways, I suppose. But it was pretty cool. I got a personal invitation from God himself to meet his newborn son. 
Am I right? You certainly are. That's what I thought. Sorry about that. Uh, where are we here? Ah, there we are. His journey was long, but when he arrived, the most wondrous sight awaited his eyes. The Christ child in the manger did lay, surrounded by animals asleep in the hay. The shepherd knelt down and began to pray and gave thanks to God for this miraculous day. Now in the east, a bright star proclaimed the good news. So three wise men set out to find the king of the Jews. What a bright star. I've never seen such a sight. No one but God himself could put such a star in the sky. Herod will be so pleased when we reach our destination and send word of the Christ child. Are we there yet? Of course we're not there yet. We've just begun our journey. Do you guys realize how far away Bethlehem is? Whatever do you mean, Melchior? Ch check out this map. You see the spot right here? Yes. That's where we are right now. Okay. And you see the spot way over there? Yes. That's where we're going. So? So our feet are going to be very sore when we get there. We have camels, Melchior. Well then, the camels' feet are going to be very sore when we get there. I'm afraid I don't see the problem, Melchior. This is the one true king we are talking about. I would travel any distance to see him and to honor him. I agree. No matter how far away how, or how long it takes us to get there, I'll, I will offer my gifts and praises to the new king. I guess you're right. Does everyone have the special offerings I brought from their land? Yes. I have gold. I have frankincense. And I have myrrh. Very good. Well, I guess we better be going. Otherwise, the kids are going to be five years old before we lay eyes on them. Will he ever stop complaining? God willing. Are we there yet? Many months later, the wise men arrived. Their journey was long, but their spirits revived. At the sight of his mother and her sweet baby boy, they finally felt peace, understanding, and joy. They gave him their gifts and then fell down in praise. Then returned to their homes, traveling a different way. Twas the night before Christmas, the birth of our Lord, the most wondrous story that's ever been told, when a group of God's chosen came from all over the land to praise the little Christ child in old Bethlehem. Now, that's the end. Or is it the beginning of a story that teaches our reason for living? On this special day of holiday cheer, let's take a moment and remember why we've all gathered here. It's not about presents, and it's not about trees, it's not about ribbons, and it's not about wreaths. It's about that most precious gift that God gave us that night, the gift of his son to make the world right. So thank you for listening to all that I had to say about that special night, which is now Christmas Day. Now, one last thing before they turn out the lights. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to, to all. all. And to all, good, good night. night. because uh, the only thing I can play, as I've told you before, is the radio. And uh, sometimes, even with modern technology, I'm not sh exactly sure how to get it going. But uh, I appreciate good music, and we had some good music this morning. And then to all of those who, who took part in this uh, little skit, you all did a wonderful job. And uh, we really appreciate it. We appreciate the time that you've put into it in order to uh, do this. I know that it takes a lot of memorization and time and working together. And thank you 
very much. Now, what we have been told this morning is um, what's referred, they've referred to as the greatest story ever told. And uh, as I thought about this, I, I thought this story is actually one of the greatest events that has ever happened in the history of mankind. It's a story that involves the greatest gift that has ever been given, and it also displays the greatest love that has ever been displayed. But you know what's interesting? That this is just one chapter of a much bigger story. In fact, this story that we've looked at one chapter of this morning is a story that has no beginning and it will never end. In fact, the story is still being written. But this morning and at Christmas time, we get to enjoy this one particular chapter of, of the story. It's a story of God's love toward mankind and how God displayed his love for sinners such as, as you and I. Now, it's a very unique story. Now, I'd like to ask everyone a question, and I expect you to be honest this morning uh, with your answer. Now, what I would like you to do is to uh, put up your hand if you have ever watched a Hallmark Christmas movie. Now, I can't really see very well from up here, but hopefully pretty well every hand is up because uh, I think pretty well everyone has at one <clears throat> point or another in their life watched a Hallmark Christmas movie. Um, we watched them. Ruth and I watched one on Friday night. And uh, other times we watched them with, our, with Marion and her family and our grandchildren and... Uh, you know, they're really sometimes uh, quite enjoyable. But you know the one thing about a Hallmark Christmas movie that I've noticed is that they're rather predictable. And uh, it's easy to predict what's exactly what's going to happen. You know, they, they all basically start the same. You will have this beautiful girl, and uh, she will come on and and uh, she turns out to be single, or maybe she's divorced, but she's sort of on her own, and she's got a career, and, and the career might not be going all that well, and, and uh, you know, there's problems she's facing. And then, uh, within a few minutes, you see this handsome-looking guy appears on the screen. And so right away, you can say, oh, there he is, right? There, there's the knight in shining armor. He's the one that's going to save the day. And at first, they don't get along. They usually have problems with each other. And they argue and bicker a bit between each other. But as the movie goes on, they start to, um, you know, draw a little bit closer. And get to like each other a little bit. Until finally at the end, it is all sealed with a kiss. And that's a hallmark. Christmas movie, right? There's not really many surprises in those movies. If you've watched a few, you can predict basically what's going to happen every time. But with this story that we're considering this morning, it is not like a Hallmark movie. Because this story that we've been watching this morning and that we're thinking about now is a story that's actually filled with surprises. Filled with things that you and I would never predict if we just read part of the story. It's unique in so many ways. Think of the surprises that we saw here this morning. Think of Mary. Now Mary was this young girl she was just in her teens, and uh, she was uh, a very good living girl, and uh, she had plans for her life.
just like all the people in here, those in their teens and the children, you know, we all have plans for our life, and Mary had a plan. She was already engaged. She was betrothed to a fine young fellow by the name of Joseph, and uh, she was much looking forward to the wedding day and, and being his bride, and, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she gets this message from an angel that tells her that she's going to have the Son of God. Now, if you don't think that's a surprise, then I don't know what is. Can you imagine? Little wonder she dropped the mixing bowl. Little wonder she was surprised. Because imagine getting that message that God was going to appear in the flesh and he was going to come as a baby. And that that baby that was coming, you were going to be the mother of the baby. What a surprise. But then there's Joseph. Now Joseph also is a very right living young man. And he's betrothed to the love of his life. And he's looking forward as well to the, the wedding and, and, and having Mary as his wife. And she's such an innocent little girl. And uh, she's so, so happy, and, and it's so nice to be with her. And, and then she decides that she's going to go and visit a cousin in a different town. Oh, no problem. Look forward to when you get back, my dear. But then Mary returns, and Joseph likely hurries out to meet her, just filled with anticipation. And all of a sudden, he notices that this one that he thought was so innocent is expecting a child. Now, for all the men here, do you think that would be a surprise? Do you think you would be taken back? Well, of course we would. We didn't expect that. And then imagine Joseph as well, and when he was devising his plan, and, and he was just going to privately divorce her, and then to get the message from the angel with those delightful words to take Mary as his wife because the one that was going to be born unto her was the Son of God. And Joseph was told his name. You know, back in those days, usually if you had a boy, I think I'm right on this, well, it often happen, happens even today, doesn't it? Where the boy gets named after the father, right? Like when my first son was born, I didn't call him David, but I called him Andrew, David, John, after his grandfather, Nicholson, right? I got to name him, but Joseph didn't get to name Mary's son because the angel told Joseph, you will call his name, let's all say it, Jesus. <laughs> For he will save his people from their sins. And so Joseph is not only told the name to call this child, but he's told the purpose for which the child was born, that he would save his people from their sins. What a surprise for Joseph. And then he obeyed the word of the Lord. Then we saw the old shepherd up here, counting his sheep. Now, if you, that's another surprise. Can you imagine if you were a shepherd, and uh, to me it would kind of be a bit of a boring life. Like, you're always out on the hills with a bunch of sheep. But they must have loved it because the shepherd loved the sheep. And so he's out there, it's nighttime, and uh, looks like he was counting his sheep. You know, all of a sudden, an angel appears. Like, what a surprise. Who would have predicted that this was going to happen? Do you think that when that shepherd got up in the morning from his sleep and continued to watch his sheep, do you think that he thought, that that night, he was not only going to be visited by an angel, but he was going to be visited by 
a host of angels that would be praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. Because God was going to be manifest in flesh. And then we saw the wise men and think of their surprise when that big star appeared. And they looked into the reason for the star. And then they made that journey to visit and to see the Son of God. But you know what? As I mentioned at the beginning, this is just a chapter of a much longer story. And the surprises don't end with the birth of the Son of God. Those surprises continue throughout his life. Think of the miracles. Now, we're not going to take time to go through all the miracles, or else you're going to be here for a while. But just think of one or two. First of all, I thought this morning, as I was speaking uh, earlier, of how uh, surprised that the teachers of Israel would have been when Jesus, as a boy, went to the temple and spoke with them. Like, they would have looked at him. He was 12 years old, and they likely just thought it was some kid that was coming, right? And then he started to talk. And he started to ask them questions, and he started to answer. And all of a sudden, they realized that this person that they thought was just a kid is somebody that knows more than they do, and they had been to university. They had studied for years, and yet this 12-year-old boy was putting them to shame with the knowledge that he had and, and the answers that he could give. That would be a surprise. I'll tell you, those old boys were surprised. And then think of the miracles as he went throughout his life. Like even if we just think of the first one, where he turned the water into, the wi into wine. Imagine being there, and all of a sudden, you, you know, you, you've got, you, you hold out the thing, and, and water goes in, and then, and then wine comes out. Like, what a surprise. And every miracle was filled with surprises as the Son of God proved that he was who the angel said he would be, that he was and is and forever will be the Son of the living God. I don't know, this is kind of an exciting story, isn't it? Talk about a, a story filled with surprises. And then even as he came to the end of his life, even his death was surprising. Even though he was hung upon a cross to give his life as a sacrifice for your sin and mine, even upon that cross there were surprises. I wonder if they'd ever before had somebody hanging on the cross and he looked down upon those who were crucifying them and then looked up to heaven and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Do you think that people had heard that were surprised? They'd likely never heard anything like that. Or those soldiers when they came to him to break his legs in order that he might die more quickly, to find out that he had died already because he gave up his spirit himself. And then they took that spear and pierced his side, and forthwith there came blood and water, the precious blood that cleanses us from all sin. And then think of three days later, do you think that was a surprise? When the one who died rose again, the one who was born in Bethlehem and lived that life that proved he was the Son of God, and then he had been crucified, and then on the third day, thank God, he was raised from the dead. What a story. And then, was it 40 days after that? Imagine the surprise of the disciples as they stood out on the mountain and Jesus was received back up into heaven. But you know what? The surprises don't end there. The surprises continue, and they will continue. And there's one verse that I wanted to read to you, and I dropped it. And it's this. 
I just, I, I love this, this verse, but I want to get it, it right because this here shows us that the story is still being written. There's still more surprises to come. You know, the, of course, the one surprise that we're all waiting for, and I wonder just how surprised we'll be, is we're waiting for the Lord Jesus to come back again. Because when he went away, he promised he'd come back. But I wonder how surprised we'll be when it actually takes place. But we do know he's coming again. But even after he comes, there's still more surprises. And here's the verse that I want to remind you of. It was written by Paul, and it was written to the church at Corinth. And he says this, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. You see, for those of us that belong to the Lord Jesus, who have trusted him as our Savior, eternity is going to be filled with surprises as God reveals things that are beyond our, our comprehension, beyond our imagination, the blessings that God has for us throughout eternity. But now, just as I finish, so I would like to ask one question. Because I'll tell you that the biggest surprise for me of all is that I'm involved in the, the story. Can you imagine? This little nobody, farm kid from a poor family, and yet God in his mercy made me part of the most wonderful story that has ever been told. And as a boy, I heard the gospel. I heard that Christ died for sinners. And I put my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. And now I'm part of the story and every surprise that God has in the future. I can tell you I'm going to be there. What about you? Does this story mean everything to you? What does this story mean to you? Have you benefited because the Lord Jesus was born, because he died and gave his life as a sacrifice? But my friend, if it's going to be a benefit of you, then there has to be that time in your life when you put your trust and your faith in him and you turn everything over to the Lord Jesus. And so that would be our prayer for each one this morning as we celebrate another Christmas together. May we always remember the greatest gift that has ever been given, the gift of love, the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Now I believe that at this time uh, we're actually going to be seeing a, a video of the uh, choir. So uh, sit back and enjoy.
So I just wanted to thank, I know we've had some thanks already. I wanted to tell the kids um, that were involved in this, all of you, how proud I am, how proud we all are of you. You've done a lot of work. You, some of you, you all did a lot of me uh, memorizing. Some of you did an incredible amount. Um, and so thank you for all the work you put into this at home so that it came together quickly. I um, want to thank the guys and gals in the sound booth for all your work. Devin, thank you for coming to our practices and all the help you were there. And um, the choir that you just got to enjoy, Christine isn't here today, but she has put a tremendous amount of effort into working with the kids and teaching them um, singing techniques, but also um, teaching them to praise the Lord. And um, so we want to thank Christine for all she's done there. She had to be very flexible, as did the kids, with their format. And um, so that was great. If you are a child here today, on your way out, please stop at the table in the foyer. There is some popcorn there and some hot chocolate for you to take home and enjoy. So don't forget to stop there. Thanks so much. Well, this is wonderful uh, to, to witness all of, all of the kids uh, and their program today. Uh, so, yeah, congratulations to everyone for uh, just a wonderful program, a wonderful celebration of Christmas. It is my pleasure uh, to be joined this morning by Maggie and Hannah and Victoria and Noah. We're going to play a couple of Christmas carols and we invite you to uh, sing with us or sing with me, I guess, uh, just as we conclude our service this morning. Rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to me, O Israel. Silent night, 
so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. concludes our service this morning. Uh, let me just pray and then uh, you'll be dismissed. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful time of year, this Christmas season, full of such joy and love. And that's because of the gift of your Son that you gave us, um, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful gift. And Lord, may we share this gift, this great news uh, with those around us this Christmas season. Lord, thank you for this time that we spent together. Um, and Lord, go before us this week as we seek to follow you and uh, as you make us more and more like your son by the power of your Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great Sunday and a wonderful week.